Hey guys, <laughs> you're supposed to start me every time. <laughs> I get so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach is hot. What? <laughs> She's been drinking tea and it's like 80 degrees outside. Because digestion. Okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to a podcast about nothing with V. And AD. Hey guys, happy June. What is June? Yeah, it's been June, but hey, we here. We are. It's actually six months since 2019. I just realized that. That's disgusting. So my half birthday is no. coming up. No. June 26th, six months until the big day. I'm celebrating. What are you celebrating? <laughs> I was almost here. My mother had conceived already. She was expecting. It was an exciting time. For who? <laughs> For her. She pers- I was excited, probably pl- past the abortion limit. <laughs> <laughs> I made it through. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's a good the way to put it. <laughs> I made it through. Uh-huh, you stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck with me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. All right. So, speaking of those things. Right. <laughs> of those things. This is interesting, though. It's really serious, guys. This is really serious. Oh, we can more serious about it day. Double but standards. Double standards are really serious because we deal with them like every day. We do. Every single day. At least for me. I know my main one is, oh, you're too aggressive. You're too this. But dudes get to be bossy and mean. And I don't get to be. That ain't fair. But the one that we were discussing Almost like contracts. They they protect you. <laughs> <laughs> the contract protects you and me. So I was saying Yes. I hope I, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. But I was saying that the whole men and women being sexually fluid well. Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah being both sexually fluid to me i don't agree with necessarily mm-hmm. it's almost like a pro-choice thing if you want to rock out with your cock out mm. <laughs> <laughs> like if you mm-hmm. want to like for men and women i'm 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 okay with it but for the girls i was saying the whole word if that's what you like to use whatever there's so many like words use a hoe there's so many terms derived from this being sexually fluid but i feel like the word protects us like we're not supposed to be having sex with everybody and i'm not gonna say supposed to be like oh you're not allowed but it's like why think about it break it down for us ad i am in my late 20s and for my friends who first of all i know that are sexually active Mm mm-hmm they don't reach whatever p- point they're supposed to reach during this act. I believe sex is something that's practiced mm-hmm. to be able to to be fulfilled on both ends that you get right. I agree with that. The climax happens for men more often than it does for women. Every time for men. Okay, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Weak sauce. All right. <laughs> so, so if you really think about it, Why would women jump around to a bunch of different partners to never get it right? Yeah. Because it's something that you should practice over time to get right so you both can get something from the experience if you aren't using sex as a practice for procreation, if it's something that you enjoy doing. Now, I do have friends who enjoy it. They enjoy the being able to be fluid and have experienced different people in that capacity because they feel like they're good at it or they like the experience or whatever. But for the ones who are doing it and can't really seem to see what they get out of it. But do they actually enjoy it or do they enjoy the, do they enjoy talking about it? Hmm. I can't think of the other word. It's like, Oh girl, guess what I did? I was with they like Tyrone the and you know, he was this big and he did this and that. It's like I don't know if you actually because it's so hard for us to climax. 
Yeah. Our minds never shut off from what's going on outside of the world. Okay. So if you, like you said, have to practice, it's like being on a team. The more you practice with the same team, the better you get because you start to understand, learn their movements, Mm -hmm. how they, you know, go on with certain things. But if, I think if a girl says that she enjoys being with multiple partners all the time, it's like, I don't know if you really enjoy that. If you're getting something out of the sex, I think you just enjoy the, I don't, I can't think of the word for it, but I get what you're saying. You, like you, you enjoy, enjoy the, the situations, the, the excitement, maybe yeah, the spontaneity. The, uh, yeah. The allure of talking about it with your girlfriends. Girl, I was with Tyrone yesterday and then he I was did, with, yeah. yeah. I would hope you wouldn't enjoy that. Cause that's pretty boring. What? Just being like with a bunch of people and explaining it like, oh, I got ran through yesterday. Yay. <laughs> 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 like, there should be more to it than that to me. Yeah. And like I told you, like because it is so hard for us to get to that point, uh, comfort, you know, like for us, it is mostly mental as, yeah. you, as you learn, as you get older. It is a mental process. So if you can't talk to this person or be open with this person mentally, you're not really doing anything. You're wasting your time. And at that point, to me, it makes me feel as though you're just letting somebody do something to you. You get what I'm saying? It's like you're you're letting somebody participate in something on you, and you're not getting anything out of it because you've never really given yourself the time to practice with this person to get what you need to get out of it. True. So I'm not going to say the word hope saves some girls from really – Exploring. I think it does because they're afraid of it. They're afraid of being called a hoe. They're afraid of being called a slut. They're well, yeah, okay. Well, then that's what I'm trying to say. I feel like it It kind of saves us. So people, want, when they want the equality and the double standard, oh, no, I should be able to do this too. But what are you really getting out of it? Because I know, I know for a fact, and I can probably bet you all your money on it, that you're not getting the same thing out of it every single time. Your money and my money. Tech, give me the money. Because as somebody... <laughs> who enjoys it i i know that practicing with the same person has has allowed me to get better you and know what get i mean it right and get what you need out of the situation exactly and without practicing for procreation now if that's all you're trying to do just get pregnant that's a different story boo hey. that's whack <laughs> like, if, overrated especially because usually the the rate in which men and women enjoy it that's I don't want to feel like anybody's just doing something to me. You get what I'm saying? Oh, that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. I want to I get something out of it too. So I don't want to feel like every time it's just okay. Let me get this over with. No, it's not exercising. It's not that. <laughs> it hurts. It's painful. Something. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there's a lot of things that come with this. So why would you want to be fluid in that way? When damn, I can- got cramps afterwards. What the <laughs> you know hell is this? Like, I don't broke a toenail. All kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I pulled my <laughs> weave out and I told him not to touch my trash. Right, I'm not sure my roots sweated like this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, like seriously, if you if you so ser- you approve of this double double standard? In a sense, yeah, I do because I feel like it holds it holds them back from doing something that's so unnecessary. And from the stories that I hear from people that I know who I've discussed or who I've heard discuss their sex life, it's like. Y'all are wasting y'all time being hoes. <laughs> like it, for, you a waste of time, and, that, and that's <laughs> why I feel as though a lot of girls nowadays are going for the money and trying to get this out of it, and trying to get that out of, out of it because they know they're not getting anything out of the situation. True, true. So, do you think that, as far as enjoying it, getting something out of it, it only comes from? intercourse no or all the way around all the way around because a lot (laughs) (laughs) no i don't think i don't think it comes from intercourse because what can make you want to explore intercourse with someone will be their personality nine times out of ten you're not doing it with somebody you don't really like or at least enticed by or intrigued by in the least bit so for girls we lead with emotions whether we like it or not we feel this person looks good to us and you know, whatever the case may be. So I have no emotion. 
<laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? We yeah. enjoy. Oh, he's playing with me. Oh, he likes me. Oh, da, 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 da. So it's exciting to. Oh, he did this. He went on his way to do That's that. true. That's it's, true. We lead with stuff like that for dudes. It's like, oh, she giving it up. She, <laughs> she, you know what I'm saying? Like she, she did this. She did that. She's showing me her. That I know she wanted. It. Like that's right. how they think. Whereas we like, oh, he bought me three drinks. Oh, he loved me. Right. Yeah, we he in a whole me, relationship. He took, right. he took me to Red Lobster. <laughs> stuff like that. Like I, I just, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't. So you I approve of that double I, standard. I, I, y'all ain't got to call yourselves hoes, but hmm, if it looks like a duck, hey, it walks like a duck. Hey, it's quack, like, quack, <laughs> quack, it's quack, 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 quack. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> what a big toe. <laughs> right. Dip a dip a dip a toe. <laughs> dip a dip a toe. <laughs> yeah. All right. So some other double standards that we actually talked about was the messy home. This is so annoying because I, I, I'm, I can attest to this. People are so accepting of a man having a messy home versus a woman. Like, for instance, my brother's home. It's not messy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I hear one more situation while he was dating that people, oh, the first thing girls love to do when they come to a man's house is clean up for him. Like that's gonna make them marry him. I don't get it. Well, I, yeah, that's true. They love this. Oh, I was. I'm cleaning up. I'm cleaning up. I'm cleaning up his house. Like it's fine. Ain't no man walking <laughs> in your house cleaning it up for you. You get what I'm saying? They're gonna judge you by the cleanliness of your house. Oh, that's real. You yeah. get what I'm saying? They're yeah. Gonna be, Cause for me, I'm going in your bathroom first. If there's a ring in your toilet, I'm leaving. Well, <laughs> actually, I'm going in your kitchen first. I mean, most men don't really use their kitchens. That's real. So I'm going in the bathroom because you. I was talking it. about for a woman. Oh, for the woman. Oh no, I'm checking everything. Y'all trifling. Well, the kitchen and the bathroom are the most important to me. Everything else, I don't care about. As long as it's not <laughs> nasty. You know how I know a dude is clean, though? That what? You know how I know if a man is, like, clean, though? Because he has candles? No. Well, that helps. But that's usually, like, a woman's doing. You can tell when a woman's been in a man's home. You can definitely tell. The sense, certain things. You're like, you, this is cool, but you ain't go to the mall and buy this bed. Bath and Body Works. <laughs> I know you did. You can tell. You didn't pick out the mahogany teak wood on your own. You did not do that. Okay, you're not fooling nobody. Right. Because y'all pick up incense, them Walmart candles on the way out. Y'all pick, I'll give you the plugins. They'll do the plugins. Yeah, that's dudes easy. Do, yeah, dudes will do the plugins. You do a, do a, a plugin in a second everywhere. All right. over. <laughs> He'll do you a plugin. You can't, you cannot breathe because there's so many damn right. plugins. I, <sighs> Bahama brings me one more goddamn time. Okay. But no, if I know a dude is clean if if you go in his bathroom and behind his toilet is clean. Oh yeah. Who that yeah. area scares me. If yes. I drop something back there yes. and it's dirty, I'm uh, not. That's it. it that's it. That's it. It could be a it could be a phone excess. You can have it. Okay. I don't want it. I don't I'm want not it. Touching it. If it falls behind that toilet, you you can have it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's another one that irritates me. Or oh, the wall. But, but I would say like Splatter this. Pink. I don't mind. I'm not going to say I don't mind a woman's house being messy, but there's a difference to me between being messy and dirty. Oh, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, girls, I expect the clothes. Okay, a couple of blankets here and there, but. I can't respect it if you do not have kids and you're not working 12-hour days. What if your kids don't live with you, though? <laughs> that's the same thing as not having kids like if you and maybe i'm biased okay my bathroom and my kitchen were always clean the living room area i cleaned twice a day when they took a nap and when they went to bed if you came to my house any other time there's toys everywhere now of course it was never nasty or anything like that but i'm not cleaning every five seconds yeah i'll clean two times also with my kitchen in the morning I empty out the dishwasher so I can load it all throughout the day. Mm -hmm. At night, I start the dishwasher. In the morning, I unload it. That, you know, so that it's it's never just dishes in the sink. It's not food everywhere. It's not like. But I don't think I've ever been in your space and had to question your cleanliness. I'm just trying to give tips to the mothers out there. Oh, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Clean while they sleep. Sleep while the baby sleep. They 10. Clean while they <laughs> not. Sleep. Why they sleep? 
why are you 10 and sleeping in the middle? You need to go get a job. <laughs> that's like, sleep while the baby sleep. The baby is six, okay? Well, okay. I'll say yes, you should sleep while the baby sleep. It makes sense. When you have anywhere from newborn to like two years old, you get some sleep. No, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, that. yeah. So I understand because even my friend, like, I always tell her all the time, like, you're you're like the neatest friend that I have. Like, mm-hmm. you know, she's always cleaning up, wiping something down. Okay, cool. And like the fact that she had a son, he's three now, but that used to drive her crazy. Like, oh my gosh, like he's putting toys everywhere <laughs> to the point where she used to hide them, like try to hide them and stuff, Aww. you know. But it's like let the baby I play with the yeah, toys. It's like I can't. And then, then she started to come around. Like I can't, I can't do that. So I just let him run free as soon as he's yeah. out i'm picking up everything yeah and picking up toys and sometimes you might just leave stuff everywhere and get it later like sleep when he sleep when he wakes up and he's playing with his toys and you can clean up the food off the wall yeah oh yeah mm. i'm just saying it happens yeah kids <laughs> we get food everywhere you we know, always have oatmeal have in the a- back of the the high chair i don't know why it was always oatmeal Oatmeal or like spinach? <laughs> like Healthy kids. Ooh. No, it was it was the other type of spinach. Oh. Fries. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a big one though, because I've noticed that too. Like women are so quick. Oh, let me clean up. Let me straighten up for you. But a girl's house will be so quick to judge. I'm not taking up my shoes in her house. I'm not doing that. I'm sitting right here. I ain't touching nothing. I can't lie. At the studio, it was a big deal to always have the place clean. And with the female interns and with the male interns, we didn't discriminate on who cleaned, which most of the time it was me and you do. Um, but if if it was dirty, I felt like it reflected me, not him. It, refe- it reflected the females, not the males. Mm. Like if, if but that that's true though. I was about to say any men and women in the same common area. Any, mm. I can say that. Yeah, because like if if somebody like, came uh, if somebody came in and went to the bathroom and the toilet seat was up and no, it could be up, uh, but if it was dirty, mm-hmm. then it was a reflection on me and the other females in the building not on the males yeah like how can you use this bathroom as a female that goes into another double standard the roles you get what i'm saying oh uh, who needs to do what yeah that's in a marriage or whatever type of partnership people have these days but that's true you know you walk into a man in a woman's house what if you got into a marriage with a woman who doesn't know how to clean up you get what I'm saying? That's like, true. It's always gonna ref- it's usually gonna reflect on the women. Like, always. Uh-uh. Why your house look like this? Exactly. Because <clears throat> it's he works so hard. Because he works so hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. That's but incredible. luckily, I married the real one because he will clean the bathroom in no, a second. He is the Zen master. When I tell you waking up in the morning, you're like, what is? Something smell like <laughs> <laughs> something. every window open, right. every you got candle the air lit, purifier yeah, on. everything. You got the windows open. It smells extra fresh in yes. here. Peppermint, yes, tea tree burning candles. <laughs> he the only one who I know that flipped the actual sticks into the fuse. Yo, so I like, met, shake them out. Yes. Like, like okay, kudos to you. you I married go. a real one, <laughs> a real one. Because like, like, uh-uh. he will scrub uh, the back of the toilet in a second. Right. He does not care. He don't play about his sense that's one thing i do now oh but no so as you come I'm like dang i still got cold with my eyes but sandalwood smells yeah. nice <laughs> <laughs> this cashmere wood <laughs> right. is delectable <laughs> cashmere wood is smelling like wow I'm like okay being overweight i'm over that i'm gonna be fat for Wait. Like, <laughs> <laughs> make room for the big girls make, make room for the big girl but uh. yeah that is a big thing though like you're a big girl and you're just a buff dude usually before you lift up your shirt like you fat it, yeah uh i don't think we ever called biggie rest his soul or um your homeboy the big one rick ross yes we never called them buff <laughs> Ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> even with rick ross losing weight we ain't never call him buff true I call him prison swole. Uh, well, swole is buff. 
prison swole. No, it's not. Prison swole. You got little knees. But I feel like he wasn't like fat. But mm. you also what? No, I'm saying I feel like he wasn't called fat. Let me say he wasn't fat because that was fat. But I don't think he was considered. It was like yeah, they call fat people give themselves that title, but it's more harsh on women than it is on men. Oh, of course. It is like that's that's another one. Like it's more like women have more pressure on them to be of a certain size, stature, build, whatever, whatever, all this extra stuff. But Lizzo is changing I've been all fluff, of that. McGruff. <laughs> Lizzo, she is. But does she, she call herself fat though? Yes. See what I'm saying? Like I don't. She shouldn't have to call herself. Oh, I guess that's what it is. But I don't. Not. What else should he? She, what big, is, what happened to big bone girl <laughs> all bones are, you got big ass meat okay what is a big bone what is that people used to use oh she's just big bone <laughs> with a lot of cushion <laughs> <laughs> so what's the stuff around the bone ball <laughs> like that's what i want to know what is that stuff around your elbows right what is that oh who got fat elbows i don't know i hope yeah, I'll both stop fat. May they why, we, why are we both <laughs> looking at our elbows? Like, wait, what's wrong with my elbows? No. But yeah, so I don't I don't know. I like fluffy dudes though. I like the pop belly solid kind. I don't want boobs big. Wait, than mine. you want the pop belly to be hard? I don't want it to be flubby. I mean what? like floppy. Yeah, like I don't mind a little like I've been eating good belly. Oh, like, oh, you 18 months pregnant. Not that. Why you got to be 18? Because now I'd be looking crazy. I mean, look. maybe four, four to five. Oh, okay. Like the pot belly. Hmm. Like you can get to it. You can get the car. Like, I don't mind the solid. You can tell it's like in your, like a gut. Like, I don't want it to. I don't, <laughs> I don't want us to do that make those noises, but i don't i don't mind the sound <laughs> my grandma it. used to pull my shirt and go it's a bowl full of jelly <laughs> <laughs> grandma is petty <laughs> it's a bowl full of jelly <laughs> seriously though that's not right though what a well, bowl full of jelly no the fact that we have to be like skinny well, they have so many words for like big now, thick, slim, thick. Let me tell you, gums, the women down in size. Atlanta are thick as hell. I don't care what race you are. I saw a white girl the oh, other yeah. day. All of them. I was like, does she get butt injections? Right. Are they sitting? No, it's that cornbread, corn fat. I don't. It's the water because Shorty was thick. Yeah. And she was white, white. It wasn't she like was she was white. like, you know, you can tell if you're like. She been hanging around the people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like you, you might can cook a little bit. Right. You don't just use paprika. Not paprika. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't just use a little bit of paprika. You might use some, you know, season all. Yeah. Ooh, Larry. Yeah, Larry. Ooh, Larry. <laughs> you might use that. She got the short haircut, dye all red. That bob. Yeah, nose ring. <laughs> okay. They be loving the bob cut. Okay. That is the white girl, black man loving Starter haircut. Kit. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's kit right it's there. like, okay, I see you. Yes. Tyrone is at show house. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone. Oh my goodness, yeah. But she definitely wasn't uh she wasn't a she wasn't a Karen with the with the <laughs> white girl black man starter kit. Not a caring. Not having kids. Hmm. That's actually a good one. When men don't have kids, they are. I don't think. I don't think they are anything. I just think it's not as pushed over as women. Like they're not as pushy on men as they are on women because we are the ones who actually make the babies. But I guess they expect us to be making them by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i don't the accomplishment thing it's like i could go to school i can have all these accolades phd i'm going back to school i'm doing all this but when you gonna have a baby yeah like what do you mean i'm like i have a career i'm doing really well da -da. when you gonna settle down and have a child which always comes first before when, when are I you going to get married? Yeah. 
And even then, when you get when you gonna find a man, like, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> it's not like oh, good job, like oh, you're accomplished. Da, da, da. If it's a man, it's oh, he's so well established and you know his mm-hmm. career and da da da. But when it comes to a woman, it's like when are you gonna settle down and have kids? Yeah. Who was saying that? Uh, Ace Hood. I can't think about her name right now. Ace Hood's fiance. How she was? She was going on a um, rampage on Instagram. Not really a rampage, but she was just stating how she's accomplished so many things. Yeah. And pretty much when she got married, she was overwhelmed by the congrat- congratulations that she got from people, which she said she was thankful for. But it was weird to hear how people just thought that she should, or she was like. Estat- or she should have been so happy because she found a man and she was like i've done so many great things it's a very weird thing yeah i've done so many great things before i actually became someone's fiance but you guys seem to only care that i got proposed to when i've been with this same person for years and years like what yeah. did you expect to come ne- you know it's almost like the stepping process like the Step to step prize, like this was kind of coming next, but why are y'all so geeked up because I found a man when I've gone to school, I've gotten degrees, I've started my own company, I've done this, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, but girl, you got you a man, life can start now, like wait, what? Yeah, like you're not accomplished until, excuse me, until you find uh, a man and settle down. Yeah. Have kids. And then for women who don't want to have kids, it's like, what? What do you mean? That's so weird. It's like, yeah. Just like I feel like there's a double standard with women not being with their their children's fathers versus men not being with their children's mothers. Ooh, that's a good one. You get what I'm saying? Like, and it's I like, really ooh, is she going to cause trouble? Right. Is she is she going to be a problem? You're doing such a good job. You're a single dad and did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the dad's at the park. Ooh, you're doing so good picking up the kids. Ooh. Like, girl, this is your first time seeing this man at the park and his kids eight. Eight, seven, and six years old. And you over here. Yes. Ooh, single daddy vibes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for women, it's like, ooh, you struggling. You need help. Exactly. Yeah. You need, you need to find you a man to help you take yep. care of them kids. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I pray that nothing, of course, happens to me until my kids are old enough to take care of themselves but if something did happen i pray that you do gets remarried wait what you just went like real left <laughs> i didn't i didn't we were talking about the double standard the single dad i wouldn't want him to be a single dad i i think he would want to try it boy bye I'm not saying I feel like he would want some help, maybe like really it would look. Help. I'm gonna but need you to find. I don't think he'll be quick to be like, "Let me go search," like "Let me go find." Like I don't, I don't think. Nah, he'll just drop them off. <laughs> <laughs> right. So right. Auntie one, Auntie two, <laughs> Auntie three, who Godfather gonna raise two, these right. kids? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, that's nice of you, though. What? Hell, if I could pick her out, I would. She looks like a good mom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about you, right. okay? But she looks like she'll take care of my kids. Actually, I might, I might find somebody and put it in my will. Lord, <laughs> I'm just saying, I got to be prepared. Not right now. I mean, you never know. I I know it's not gonna happen right now. Oh no, I mean not right now. I'm just saying, so like, you gonna pick somebody the same age? Wouldn't you want them to be younger? What do you mean? Like when when you think you gonna die? Like when you 80? Well, I pray to God. I'm 80? That's so young. 90? I mean, I'm looking at a good, like, 95. You said Wednesday. No, I said 110. No, nah, that's too long. That's <laughs> too long. I ain't trying to be here that long. <laughs> I'm trying to see my great-grands, though. Great-grands. And Lord. possibly my great-great-grands. Well, Jane better hurry up. So I'm just uh-uh. <laughs> no, Jane. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down, baby. You're going too fast. But yeah, that's actually a good one. Single yeah. moms and single dads. Oh, what's the other one? Stay at home. Oh yeah, stay at home. Now this is not a man woman thing. This is a black and white thing. <laughs> <laughs> so if 
a black man was to be a stay at home dad, mm-hmm. we would look at him as lazy. lazy. Yeah, like, oh, he need to go get a job. He's lazy. If a white man was to stay at home, it'd be like, oh, mm-hmm. he is so like in with the times. He's just, uh, it's just so amazing. Right. He's a soccer dad. <laughs> okay, I, okay, that's what they call him. I want to be a soccer mom. I You're will about be. to be. Oh, on Saturday. <laughs> You're about I to signed be. up for snack duty. <laughs> you would be on snack duty. I mean, it sounds like fun. My mom used to be on snack duty for basketball. It was fun. I used to eat all the snacks in the car. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm going to take one out of yours, but I got to make it even so I got to take yours, yours, yours. <laughs> one from everybody on the team. Yeah. But that is true, though. Because what show was that that you were saying? Um, oh, so they were talking about it on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And basically, Lala's character is married to a white man. She's a working mom, and he's a stay-at-home dad. And what uh, Gary with the T was saying was like, but why? He got to be a stay-at-home dad and da-da-da. And if it was a black man, then we'll be calling him lazy and everything else. And I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. That is true. Because we do it na- like we do it naturally. We oh, do. he ain't got no job. He needs to be out there working. Right. He ain't making enough to support. She the breadwinner. He needs to be doing this and this and this and this and this. And when she gets home, if this is going to be the case, that's true. And And are we supposed to, like, as a man... Should you feel like you have to go and be the breadwinner? Most of them do, if you really think about it. I'm sure it takes, at this point in time, as the people, from what I'm seeing, it takes a level of confidence, courage, and security in yourself to be a stay-at-home dad. Oh, absolutely. Because of the pridefulness, the standards, the statistics, everything that comes with you being a stay-at-home dad. But do you think that there is a double standard when it comes to being black and white? Most definitely. Yeah. Because a black man, as from what I know, is supposed to be going out and getting it. I know my dad told me, you not, don't shack up. You go get your own. Y'all do something. Do it together. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. But I do think there's most definitely a standard. And there's a pressure on black men to be able to provide and to make a living and be able to give and do for their yeah. families, their homes. And that's probably why they don't want to have kids or they keep running away from their families and responsibilities. Oop message. <laughs> <laughs> message. <laughs> message. <laughs> no, nah, that's real. If you really think about it, if they know they can't provide for the whole family. Like, I can get a kid some money, but you, you asking for a lot. Then the, and the woman needs this and she needs to do this. And then, okay. That's why they step back and throw the money from a distance. And that's, that's, their, that's their term of providing. You get what I'm saying? And I will say a lot of black men that I know that are in the whole situation where they have children and they're not with their child's mother, money is valued over anything. You get what I'm saying? Like for other people, it's time. They can come spend dinner with the family and it'd be okay if he's not in the position. He can come do this. But for black women, I need the money. You get what I'm saying? Like it's like they try like, hey, you can come over. But it's very unlikely before that happens. They're usually asking for the handout of the money first. And I'm a person, I'm a firm believer in if you set that standard, that's what it's going to be for the rest of your life with your children if it's just a money game with them don't get mad in 10 years 20 years when they're asking you for money still because that's the relationship that you set for them because you didn't put forth that effort or you in the co-parent in whatever co-parent situation that you were in didn't take the time to say hey let's make dinner once a week if we're living yeah, around each other or let's i, I honestly think this. that if men in general and i'm not tapped into the white community as much because hey (laughs) i'm not white (laughs) (laughs) so but i know for a lot of women and men that i know family and not family if you don't have the money one communication which we preach almost every episode but two still ain't getting right exactly just talk to (laughs) us (laughs) but two if you 
one communicate and say yo i don't have the money but i'm gonna come i'm gonna pick up you know little jimmy from (laughs) little jimmy from school so you don't have to sometimes it's about pulling your weight it's not always about the money and yes the money definitely does help but if you pull your weight like you're not giving me the money and you don't come spend time with your child but that's what i'm saying as black women most of the time because we also have in our mind that you should be a provider but they're not thinking about any True. other type of providing. Like time is, a, you can provide your time to a child. You but if provide, you're not providing the time. If, if you're not providing the money in most people's minds that I've heard, even from young to old situations, from people who have grown children and still are resentful to their, you know, the person that they had child a child with because they didn't give them the money and they had to do it all by themselves. Yeah. But, so time was not really, is not really an option for a lot of black men when it comes to these baby mama situation so do you think that it's not an option or do you think that if they would have been open enough to be honest i don't have it but what i can do is this this and this that it would have been okay it goes, I, i'll blame both parties because it goes both ways like i said i've been conditioned to believe a man is supposed to provide so i feel like if i was in that situation right now that's probably what i would be looking for first as well i couldn't at like if you really think about it, like sure. I'll, be, I'll be like, yeah, come spend time. But I'll be sitting there like we broke sitting here looking stupid. You over here <laughs> playing with these kids. I need to go get some food. What, like whatever the case may be, because that's what I've been, what I've seen, what I've heard, what, what I've, what I know to be the truth. I just for me in this day and age, I can't have sympathy for anyone that's looking for anyone else to provide for them. I don't care who it is. Period. Like period. So If you have a computer or phone, like, you can make money off of Instagram nowadays. You can provide for yourself. And it may take a little bit of time, but it's going to take time waiting for that check from the man who doesn't have a job. That's true. So, but if they're usually living in a situation where they're making it work anyway, but just because of the preconditioned thought process that we have from what we hear from people, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the... The thoughts that we had, we have, and what we're taught, and the situations we were raised in, we were taught that whether the man was providing or not, if he wasn't providing, we were hearing about how he needed to. Yeah. If he was providing, this is what do whoever you're looking for needs to be doing. Yeah. Whereas you know, other people are looking for time. Yeah. And and I'm not gonna say. Because I was watching Steve Harvey the other day Mm -hmm. and like just a situation I know I'll probably never hear about or haven't heard about in the situation. The wife had children with her now Mm ex-husband and the ex-husband and his new girlfriend with her children live with her and her new husband in the household now. And they're doing it for the children. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Yep. Tongue twister confused me too. Okay. So So the the wife ex-husband and his new wife live in a house with, with they all live together basically four of them four adults and all the children who and who's the fourth adult her husband the the ex-wife's new husband so the the ex the there was a, a married couple let's just say matt and amy matt and amy got a divorce mm-hmm. amy married sam matt met ashley and they all moved in together that ain't no for the kids y'all some but, freaks <laughs> okay <laughs> like let's call but it, it was, what it is but, but the story was that i'm with it matt got into a car accident he was incapable of doing anything for himself for about two months when he first woke up out of surgery the first thing he said he just wanted to be around his kids so that's when amy said hey i would never take that away from him her husband agreed they don't have any children together only the ex couple they have children together the new married couple they don't have any children together but they agreed he agreed to letting him come into the home and to stay a couple of months down the line he didn't leave he brought his new girlfriend in who also had three or four children so they all kind of just it's for first of all what size house is this right i got a big house Uh, second of (laughs) all they're all real ones literally they're all real ones because to be able to yeah that's at its finest like i i look if it works for you i'm not mad at it right if you like it i love it but that's just but that's the type of thing that i'm talking about with the communication like hey i'm oh yeah you get what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like we don't really we don't really talk to each other when it comes to that because of what they are taught 
to say that they have to do and what we believe. So it's a constant like bumping of heads. Talk to each other, people, and then move in with your exes and their new boos. <laughs> right. Save some money. Ouch. <laughs> save some money. Build your credit. <laughs> Talk of the day. Black people love credit. Let's build our credit, people. Right. We love credit. <laughs> Black people love Bad credit. credit, good Bad credit. Bad credit. We're talking about good credit. Build All your credit. credit. Yeah. Aw. Well, this was a good one. I don't care about double standards. Live your life. If you want to be a hoe, be a hoe. Just don't hoe. call it that so you don't feel as bad. <laughs> right. Call it. Playing, but save yourselves. Save <laughs> for the JJs. Yeah. Tell the Twinkie story. <laughs> okay. So I was, trying to give, <laughs> I was trying to give an example of what I meant by, like, you know, the whole girls not needing to really be too sexually involved with too many people and i use the example of a stick in a twinkie right Mm. if you stick the stick into the twinkie nothing is going to get damaged besides the twinkie but then she was like where does the hole in the twinkie no where's the hole in the twinkie where's the hole in the twinkie and she ruined it but i'm just but not only that all i'm saying is women have babies it is nothing bigger than a baby's head so i'm sorry men Okay, when you think you, you destroying the <laughs> pussy, you're not. Okay, like we push out heads and shoulders and all that other shit. Like you're Ten not de- pounds, two ounce baby. Yeah, you're not destroying anything. It's already destroyed. I can't laugh without peeing. Okay, <laughs> like let's be real. I sneeze and I pee. I laugh and I pee. I cough and I pee. And I'm sorry, it's not because of your ding dong. Dang. That's funny. Is it because I'm big <laughs> ass head kids? Like it's just it, like you, that is funny. you're not destroying anything. <laughs> <laughs> so at, so take a watermelon but, and put it do a donut <laughs> hole, and that is destroying. Okay, <laughs> do I feel some type of way? Yes, I do. <laughs> but but then that brings me to my next point. There's a 50-50 chance every single time that you do it that you can get pregnant. I don't care if you're using contraceptive or not. Oh, 99.999. If it breaks, 50-50. What is breaking? The condom breaks. Oh, everybody need to use condoms, especially in Georgia. It's too many AIDS and syphilis commercials down here. And they have the uh, for prep prep pills. Like what? Pre-HIV pills. Yo, I look. Hey. You cheat on me, it's over. I ain't never said that before, but it's over. Down Uh here, hmm, you can have itchy booty. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want it. I don't want it, but no, save that for JJ's. Yeah. Do what you got to do. Double standards are for fools. Do, 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 do. Baby shark. (laughs) 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 This was fun. This was real. So we're talking about having a uh, Skype watch party for Human Centipede. Have you ever seen that movie? No. Okay, so Jake and I, and a couple other people, but they don't matter, just me and Jake, um, (laughs) watch Human Centipede together for the first time with a big bottle of wine. And Jake is the engineer at House and producer and songwriter. He's pretty cool and amazing, but shh, don't tell him. Um, we're having a Skype watch party next week for Human Centipede. And if anybody's down, then we can watch Human Centipede together. And I'm just saying that because I don't want to watch it by myself because I'm scared. Is, is it scary? Okay, so Human Centipede is this guy. And he... Uh, what? I can't think about centipedes. Okay, so he connects... <coughs> okay, he connects... He basically takes he took like the first one i think he took five females and he sewed them together but he sewed them together mouth to butt (gasps) and basically he like force fed the first person and so you can imagine what happened after that i'm not watching that we are (laughs) come on let's watch i'm not gonna be there i'll be sick (sighs) <sighs> anyway <laughs> watch party watch, watch party and this time it's gonna be 500 people 
Ah. I'm so excited, but scared. Can you watch yes. it with me, please? I'm scared. Me too. I just threw up in my mouth. See what I'm saying? I can't watch stuff like that. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Leave us voicemails, guys. We want to hear from you. On Anchor. Anchor. Voicemails. Voicemails. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Checking out. Peace Bye. out. Bye.